grace to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Are you excited? Hallelujah, Jesus. Are you excited? Are you expecting this morning? Amen. Somebody expecting God to do some big things in this service this morning. I don't know about you, but I came to receive something big. God is doing something good. Something good is going to happen to you this morning. I just declare it over you that you're going to receive that answer that you've been praying for. God is going to speak to you. You're going to see that breakthrough happen. You're going to get that healing. You're going to get that breakthrough. Amen. That door is going to open. That financial miracle is going to happen. That healing in your body is going to happen. God is going to speak to you and you're going to get revelation. Amen. This is why we come to praise our God, and we're here to minister to the Lord, to minister to him, and we thank him for the release of angels over this place. Let's just pray together now. Just agree with me, church, as we begin to open this service. We thank you, Lord God. This is a house of worship. Father, that we worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh God, you said that the Father is seeking the worshipers in this very hour. We thank you, Lord God, as we join together today. We love you, Jesus. We lift up your name in this place. There is none beside you, oh God. We pray, have your way in this place, oh Lord. Thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever that you change not. There's no shadow of turning in you we thank you that you're faithful oh god that you never leave us nor forsake us that you are the same miracle working jesus right here today and we shall see the breakthrough as we give you the praise and we give you all the glory begin to just lift him up we thank him this morning we exalt him he is worthy 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 to be praised amen amen Let's stand to our feet in this morning, church. The Bible says that I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise will continually be on my lips. Our first song is perpetual praise. Perpetual means continual. So as you're singing that I will give the Lord perpetual praise, you're saying I'm going to bless the Lord at all times, Amen. that I will continually have his praise on my lips. Amen. Let's bless him. I will, I will bless the Lord, bless the Lord forever, forever and ever and ever. I will, I will bless the Lord, bless the Lord forever, forever. He is good. Sing it again, sing. I will, I will bless the Lord, bless the Lord forever, forever and ever and ever. I will, I will bless the Lord. One more time singing, I will. I will. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. I will. I will. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Forever. For he is good. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. Perpetual praise. Forever. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. Perpetual praise for he is good. I will give, I will give the Lord perpetual praise, perpetual praise forever. I will give the Lord perpetual praise, perpetual praise for he is good. Oh, I will, I will bless the Lord, bless the Lord forever, forever and ever and ever. I will, I will. Lord, forever, for he is good. I will, oh, I will, I will. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, forever, forever, and never, and ever. I will, I will. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, forever, for he is good. I will give the Lord, I will give the Lord perpetual praise, perpetual praise, forever. I will give the Lord perpetual praise, perpetual praise, for he is good. I will, oh, I will give the Lord perpetual praise, perpetual 
praise forever. I'll give the Lord perpetual praise, perpetual praise for you. From the top, singing, I will. I will. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. I will. I will. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Forever. For he is good, I will, I will, I will. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, forever, forever, and never, and ever. I will, I will. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, forever. For he is good. I will give the Lord perpetual praise, perpetual praise, forever. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. Perpetual praise for his good. I will give the Lord perpetual praise, perpetual praise forever. I will give the Lord perpetual praise, perpetual praise for his good. And Jesus is the rock on which I stand. 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 Sing again. Jesus is the rock on which I stand. 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 He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. Jesus is the rock on which I stand. 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 He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. Jesus is the rock on which I stand. Okay, I just got to give you some permission this morning. There's some space around you. You can utilize that space. We get to enjoy worshiping God this morning. And I know that my skin is a little um, pale for these songs, but they are still my worship this morning. Jesus is the rock on which I stand. How many Caribbean folk do we have in the house this morning? What? Represent, represent. Because we're singing some oldies here today, right? So I want you to enjoy this morning. It's summertime, it's Calypso time. So let's enjoy worshiping our God this morning. Jesus is the rock on which I stand. 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 He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. Jesus is the rock on which I stand. He's above, he's above, below, before, behind, and around me. He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. He's above, below, before, behind, and around me. Jesus is the rock on which I stand. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. My God is a miracle. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. My God is a miracle. He's a miracle working God. I command my hands to praise the Lord. 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 Hands, praise the Lord. Hands, praise the Lord. I 
command my feet to praise the Lord. I command my feet to praise the Lord. I command my feet to praise the Lord. I command my feet to praise the Lord. Feet, praise the Lord. To praise the Lord, I command my neighbor to praise the Lord. I command my neighbor to praise the Lord. I command my neighbor to praise the Lord. Neighbor, praise the Lord. Neighbor, praise the Lord. Neighbor, praise the Lord. Neighbor. Hands, praise the Lord. Hands, praise the Lord. Hands, praise the Lord. My feet, oh feet, praise the Lord. Feet, praise the Lord. Feet, praise the Lord. continually be on our lips we worship you in this place today God be enthroned on our worship be exalted as we lift you up God you said that you would draw all men to you so God our job is to lift you up we've come to exalt you to magnify who you are God you're awesome you're worthy God you're holy oh we worship you yes Lord Lord, I lift your name on high. And Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. Yes, I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth. To show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Dejaste el trono para mostrarnos la luz. De tu trono a la cruz y mi deuda pagar de la cruz al morir de la muerte a tu trono tu nombre levantaré. Tu nombre levantaré. Me deleito en adorarte. Te agradezco que en mi vida esté. Que vinieras a salvarme. Dejaste el trono para mostrarnos la luz. De tu trono a la cruz y mi deuda pagar de la cruz al morir de la muerte a tu trono tu nombre levantaré dejaste el trono para 
mostrarnos la luz de tu trono a la cruz y mi deuda pagar de la cruz al morir de la muerte a tu trono tu nombre levantaré and Lord I lift your name Lord I lift your name on high Lord I love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my I'm so glad you came to say you came you came from heaven to earth to on our lives God be magnified in this church in our lives in our homes be magnified God yes, Lord. oh we worship you Hallelujah. Jesus oh we surrender ourselves again Lord yes Lord just worship him in this place this morning. Just lift up your song of worship to him. Exalt him in the way that you do it. He's an awesome God. He's a worthy God. He is a holy God. And I know that you've come into this place today to worship him. So just worship him. Oh, we worship you. We fix our gaze on you. Oh, Lord. Yes, we worship you. Be lifted up, be lifted up, as we bow down, be lifted Oh, 
For those of you who were here in pre-service prayer, we prayed a lot about fire in this place today. See, God can't resist sacrifice. God can't resist sacrifice. So when we cry out that be lifted up as we bow down, we're saying, God, we sacrifice our agenda. We sacrifice our time. We are here to bow down so that you'll be glorified. We're praying for fire in this place today because we want him to be glorified. We want the fragrance of Jesus. That as we worship, it's that sweet smelling fragrance. That the fire of God consumes those things that are messing up our world. That he is the only one that's seen. That he is the only one that's known. That he is the one that's purifying. So when we cry out, God, as we bow down, be lifted up. We're saying, God, I'm here as your living sacrifice. I'm here to be consumed. God, don't resist my worship today. Fire fall down. Yes, Lord. So be lifted up. Be
give you all the glory. We give you all. We give you all the glory. We worship you. down just a little bit brother Sean praise God thank you Jesus you know soon soon and very soon this will be us in heaven praise God Let me grab that right there. soon and very soon this will be us in heaven before the throne of God oh hallelujah how many of you feel the presence of the Lord here today? I do. Come on, will you lift your hands up? If you've never done it before, try it. It's really an amazing experience to lift your hands up to heaven and give Jesus all the praise. The Bible says that before the throne of God is 10,000 upon thousands upon thousands of people worshiping the Lord and I have a suspicion we're going to sing this song in heaven before Jesus oh hallelujah praise God he's coming soon but he's here right now hallelujah the presence of the Lord is here right now God we give you praise we give you glory you're worthy of all praise there's nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like our Savior, our great Lord and King. Oh, we magnify your name today and we declare how awesome you are in this place. Let the holiness and the righteousness of our God settle in this place today. Let it touch our lives in such a real and powerful way. Let it change us forever. Let the presence of the Holy Spirit, we pray, oh God, minister to everyone here today and everyone who's watching online. May they feel what we are feeling and sensing in this sanctuary today, which is that wonderful, amazing, glorious presence of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Can we sing this song one more time, just one more time, with hands raised? like we were before the throne of God right now, which we are, hallelujah, with all of our hearts. One more time, Pastor Hamburg. God bless you. 
Hallelujah. Just worship, just worship. Just worship. The presence of the Lord is so strong in this place right now. Praise God. We worship you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I just feel like somebody feels fire on their body right now. I just feel somebody, there's somebody here, you feel like your body's on fire right now. Praise God. Is that you, Michael? You feel the fire of God on you, son? power of God's on you. I know it. Some of you, the fire of God, just feel your body's getting hot. Anybody feel that? If that's you, put your hand up. He's putting his hand up right here. You just feel like your body's getting hot right now. Praise God. I just felt the Lord said those that are feeling their body getting hot, God's touching them and healing them right now. As the presence of God is so strong. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you feel that, honey? The fire of God on your body? Lift your hands up too, honey. God's touching you right there. Rabba, see, she's crying. The presence of God is touching her body. The Lord's touching you, Michael, right? The Lord's touching you, Michael. He's filling you with his spirit today. The Lord is touching you, son. He loves you. God's doing great miracles in your life, and today he's bringing you just a little bit further into him. I can see tears in his eyes. The Lord's touching. You feel the fire of God on you. Put your hands up and just... Give God thanks. The Lord's touching you. I see people crying all over the sanctuary today. If you're watching us online, the power of God is healing people. Thank you, Lord. You can do it all by yourself, Lord. All you need is faith. Oh, we give you praise. Heal these people, Lord, and touch them, I pray. Draw them closer to you and put a great presence and anointing on their life praise God do you mind if I just put my hand on your heart father fill this man with your spirit you've done a miracle you've delivered him of so many things oh Jesus put the fire of the Holy Spirit in him now Woo! praise God 
He feels it. I can feel it coming into, into his body right now. Jesus, fill him with the Spirit. Glory. Yes. See the power of God's on him. He just got newly saved. You know that? He just came to Christ a couple of weeks ago. God had delivered him from so many things. Now the presence of the Lord is touching him. Come on, keep your hands. You can do it again if the fire of God's on you. Give God thanks. If the fire of God's on you, give God thanks right now for a miracle that's happening in your life. I tell you, if the fire of God's on you, there's a miracle happening in your life. Oh, bahasata. Yes, yeah, sing that. Go ahead, sing that. Well, hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thy the glory. Revive us again. Sing it again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Presence of God is so strong. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Touch your people, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Just worship. That's all you got to do is worship. Keep, stay in the spirit by worshiping, talking to him, listening, allowing him to touch you. Thine the glory. Just Holy Spirit, just waiting on Him. The Bible does tell us, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, precious Lord, hallelujah. Oh, precious Lord, hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Precious Lord. You sense that? That's the presence of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Revive the church again. Hallelujah. God the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God the glory. Revive the church again. Hallelujah. 
Come on, as we sing this song, I think about the Church of Canada. Well, hallelujah, i the glory, revive the church again. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Pastor, isn't the Lord wonderful? Praise God. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Respond to it. Come on. Hallelujah. The Lord is wonderful. The Lord is beautiful. The Lord is magnificent. There's nobody like him. Come on. There's nobody like him. Can you say something about the Lord just from yourself? The Lord is wonderful. The Lord is magnificent. The Lord is awesome. The Lord is great. The Lord is holy. The Lord is righteous. The Lord is strength. He's our salvation and our rock. Hallelujah. He's the glory and the lifter of our heads. He is our firm foundation. He's our life eternal. He's worthy of all praise. Come on, hallelujah. Can't praise him enough. Can't declare his goodness amongst the nations enough. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. How you feeling, buddy? Good? Presence of God's wonderful, isn't it? How you feeling, honey? What's the Lord doing? What's the Lord doing in you? What's he doing? It's drawing you closer to him, renewing your heart, speaking, speaking to you. Peace be still. Praise God. Everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. You feel his peace, his warmth. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that wonderful? I want you all to hear that today. Everything's going to be all right. Come on, I, I, I pray you all hear that in your heart today. Everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Say that. Everything's going to be all right. For if God is for me, who or what could ever be against me? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just 30 more seconds. If God be for me, who or what could be against me? Thank you, Jesus. Let me say that again. If God be for me, who or what could ever be against me? If God is for me. Hallelujah. Will you, I know we're not supposed to do this, but will you just say hello to somebody today? Praise God and bless somebody in a, in a, in a certain way. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Bless each other. I know they don't want us to bless each other, but let's bless each other today. God bless you all. Here she comes. Praise God. There's. I will. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Bless one another. Love one another. Wave to each other. Give a fist bump or something. My God. I'm tired. I'm tired of this. It's time for the church to love on each other again. Amen. That revive us. That's a great song. Revive us. Sing it again. Revive us. If you're at home, revive us. Oh, I pray that. We pray that for the Church of Canada, don't we? How many we release our faith for the Church of Canada to be revived in the name of Jesus? God bless you, team. Great job. How are you, do How are you doing? Okay. Somebody help her. She's going to need it. Power of God's honor. Amen. The revival, the presence of the Lord. Amen. Keep playing a little softly there, Shola, for a second. Hallelujah. Shola's like, I'm out of here. No, you're not. Jesus. Do you know that song, Jesus is the sweetest name I know? 
Yes, there it is. Play that for me. You know, the Bible says that they brought the minstrels so that Elijah could go in the spirit and deliver the word of the Lord. Praise and worship. People say, why do we sing? Well, we have to. Number one, we're commanded to worship the Lord. Number two, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. But it's praise and worship that puts ministers and the people of God into the anointing. So that's why we need to worship. Because we come in here with all kinds of stuff, don't we? Stuff, baggage. From the week, from the year, from the situations of our lives. We come in, we come thinking about it all. Don't, what am I going to do? How am I going to do that? How am I going to figure that out? How am I going to make that happen? How am I going to bring change to this situation? We bring all of that into a sanctuary, don't we? Then I thought while we were worshiping today of great scripture, the hills melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. Everything I'm trying to figure out can just melt before my very eyes and God can come through for me and make something happen. Hallelujah. Rather than me try to make it all happen myself. And I've, I'm guilty of that too because I'm an analytical type of guy. I, I'm a builder. I like to do it myself. But it takes humility to yield and submit to the Holy Spirit. And then I think to myself right there, I'm trying to figure a bunch of stuff up and figure a bunch of stuff out. And I, I know the presence of God can help me make it all happen. Hallelujah. Because those hills melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. Somebody say amen to that. Glory to God. I know you're sitting down, Amber, Pastor Amber, but you can sing right there. You don't have to get up again. Do you know how to sing this song? Because I'm not a singer, but you are. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's sing that song. I just feel the, the anointing coming out of my spirit on this song. Yes. If you know it, sing it. That's the reason why. That's the reason why. that to him today. Praise God. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And he's just the same. Yes, hallelujah. Isn't that so true? Come on, isn't that so true? Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord? I know you do. Do you love Him? Sweet Jesus. Bless your people today, Lord, I pray. Bless them. Continually bless them and keep them strong in the hour in which we live. Oh, you're so wonderful, Lord. Where would we be without you? What would we do without you? Where would we go without you? How could we ever live now without you? Did you ever feel that way? Hallelujah. How can I ever live without God now? I pray anyone in the sanctuary today that you really get a real touch from the Spirit of God today. Rekindling the fire back in you, but also bring you back to that realization that it's impossible to live without God. Once you've tasted Jesus and the goodness of God, you realize it's impossible to live without Him. Praise God. Can we sing it one more time and then I'll preach. Hallelujah.
Yes, oh, hallelujah. And he's just the same as his lovely name. Yes, hallelujah. That's the reason why I love you. I love you, Lord, so much. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is. Because Jesus is the sweetest, sweetest name I know. Can you give the Lord a big hand clap? Thank you, Lord. So wonderful to see everybody today in the presence of God. Amen. I tell you what, I was I truly as we say it all the time, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. God is good. Come on, look to your neighbor and say, God is good. All the time. He's really good. Amen. If you have your Bibles, grab them and let's get ready to receive the word. And as you're turning there, I want to just share a few things with you. Uh, I'm so thrilled that already we've given out thousands of these cards and uh, we'll have more available to you next week. Uh, these wonderful cards, there's, there's always hope for Canada. We're asking you to take some, put them in the mailbox of your neighbors, put them on people's windshields in your neighborhood. There is always hope for Canada. And on the back it says, for God so loved the world, John 3:16. The prayer of salvation and a little information about our church, but more importantly, we want people to get saved. So next week, let's give out a few thousand more of these into the city of Hamilton. Amen. How many believe Jesus is coming soon? I mean, you look at everything that's going on right now. I don't know about you, but I'm getting really excited. I, I feel like our eternal vacation is coming soon. The Lord is coming soon with everything that's being set up. And the only thing we want to take with us, listen, you've never seen a hearse with a U-Haul trailer. I'll tell you that very straight up. You've never seen a hearse with a U-Haul trailer. You ain't taking any of it with us when the rapture takes place. Amen. The only thing I'm taking into heaven is my family and every person I led to Christ. Isn't that true? That's all I'm taking with me. I'm not taking these clothes, that's for sure. I'm not taking this watch or anything else. The only thing I'm taking with me and the only thing you're taking with you is your family and anybody you've led to Christ and the works that you've worked for Christ. So please do that. Let's get these out. Let's get a few more thousands of these into people's hands. Uh, just to also want to win young children to the Lord coming up. We have our v free, free vacation Bible school happening on August the 16th for the week. And uh, there it is. It's hard to see on the screen, but there's posters around. Invite. as We want as many children. Forget cold. Bring them in here. We are going to touch them with the love of Jesus Christ. And every day there will be a salvation message to those children to come to Jesus. Amen. So uh, that's invite all the kids of your neighborhood. We'll take care of all of them here. And we have so many volunteers. So we give God praise for this week of saving children. You know, I, I remember when I was a little, little knee-high to, uh, a to a grasshopper, uh, my parents lived on uh, Dunsmere Road, and we lived right across the street from the Salvation Army on Dunsmere and Adair. And you could actually sit on our front porch and look at the pulpit when the front doors were open. Remember that, Mom and Dad? And uh, the doors would be open in the hot summer days, and you could see the pastor preaching from our, from our porch. And they would have a vacation Bible school. It was in that vacation Bible school. I'll never forget. I went in there and I kneeled down and I gave my life to Jesus. Of course, amen. Of course, I, I went astray as a teenager. But the Lord, that seed planted in me, brought me back to the Lord. And whoever that pastor was, I don't know if he's still around or if he's, if he's in heaven or are those people that served in that vacation Bible school. But because they led me to the Lord, I've led thousands to the Lord around the world. So we never know what God will do through a vacation Bible school. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't forget prayer. Prayer is changing this church. Prayer Tuesdays at noontime. Prayer, pre-service prayer, 945. Don't forget prayer. Uh, and uh, also wonderful, we have so many people we have to water baptize in this church. So amen. 
So August the 15th, if you have not been water baptized, I don't care what any pastors told you, you must be water baptized. I know they're saying now you don't need to do that. No, you need to do that because the Bible says that and the Bible commands us to do it. So August the 15th, we've decided to do something special. We're going to have a service. We're going to have a time of food and celebration. And we're also going to water baptize those who want to be water baptized in a pool outside. Amen. So, uh, so that'll be on the 15th. So please, 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 uh, if you know anybody needs to be water baptized, bring them. We will baptize them that day. And, uh, and we will see them come to Christ. Hallelujah. And one last thing before I preach. I'm going to sneak out of here very fast today, family. So I won't be able to talk to anybody. It's not because I'm snooty, stuck up, or don't want to talk to you in any, any you know me, I'll stay to, the, I'm usually the, one of the last out talking, but that precious daughter of mine is going back to Virginia tomorrow. And I get one more day, and our family gets one more day before she goes back to her fourth year of university. Can you imagine already, her fourth year of university? Fourth year of pre-law. I've, I've used so many lawyers and given so much money to lawyers over the years, I've decided to grow one. <laughs> I think it's cheaper to grow one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And so there she is right there. So I'm going to sneak out with, with my family today so we can spend the day with, with uh, Amelia before she heads down to Virginia. What a blessing you've been all summer, honey. You've worked so hard around the church. And we thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for you. If you have your Bibles today, let's get into the Word of God. If you have your Bible, go to Ezekiel chapter 22. I think we need clarification back in the church. I think we need clarification back in the pulpit. Something we can pray about for the church, not just our church, but the church as a whole in Canada, around the world. We need clarification again to really what God is looking for. We need clarification again to what God is truly looking for in this hour. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to say a couple more things as you turn there. Great to have Curtis on board with us. Curtis was playing bass today. Curtis, welcome officially to the church. I've seen Curtis online. I'm like, we got, I got to get this guy here. This guy, I got to get this anointed musician here. We prayed you in, Curtis. You're here. You and Tammy. Amen. Hallelujah. And I forgot to say happy birthday to all the birthdays this week. My mom's birthday was the other day. My mom is 28 today. 28 this week. 28. You, do the, you figure out how she came to 28 and you can do the reversal and you'll figure it out all by yourself. Sister Shauna's birthday is today. Happy birthday, Sister Shauna. I won't say how old you are, but I'll let you tell the people that yourself. Praise God. 65. She gets her pension today. Amen. Peggy Sue's birthday. Who else? Whose birthdays? You're pointing at somebody. Who are you pointing at, Colin? Max's birthday. My son's birthday. He turned 13. He turns 13 in a day or two days. He said, now I got another teenager in my house. But anybody who's celebrating your birthday, God bless you, everybody. The people have been asking us to bring back the chocolate bars. Uh, we'll bring them back. How about next month? So all you July people, I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. We're going to bring them back in September, and we'll make up for the whole year. How's that sound? Is that fair enough? Glory to God. Ezekiel 22, 30. We're going to be reading from there, but we need clarification back on in the church of what God is really looking for. What is God searching for? What is he really looking for? You know, we get caught up in church on buildings again and chairs, and we get caught up on keyboards and all of, and pulpits and the style of pulpits and the color of chairs and church fight church people fight over the color of carpet because they think one color will bring the spirit of god or cause the church to grow in a more magnificent way you know we get caught up on all of the signage and materials and everything else we get caught up on the, the style of worship the type of worship and uh, we think that's what god is really looking for we think if we give God all of that, he'll be happy and the church will grow and, 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 and our lives will be more enhanced and more better. Uh, but that's really, that's not what God's looking for. That's not what God's looking for. What is God really, really looking for 
in this hour, well, he's always been looking for it. It's never changed. The Bible says in Ezekiel 22, verse 30, here's what God said. And I sought for a man among them, period. And I sought for a man among them that they should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. What a travesty God's saying here through the prophet Ezekiel. I have looked for a man amongst a nation so that I can put a hedge around that nation and I could protect that nation from it being destroyed and I found nobody. Wow. But the key there is God saying, I'm looking for a man. God's not looking for anything in this hour right now, but a man. And could I even dare say a people, and especially our precious women, who are more sensitive to hearing the voice of the Spirit than us men. And that's a fact. That's a fact. It was the women who found Jesus' tomb empty, and it was the women who believed that it was empty because he rose from the dead. Because our precious women are more sensitive to picking up the things of the Spirit than us men. Can I get an amen on that? I thought I'd at least get an amen from all the ladies on that one. But the people, the people, he said this, he said, I sought for a man. He really is looking for a man. He's always been looking for a man. He's always been looking for a woman. He's always been looking for a people. We think about Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. He was looking for Adam. Adam was running from him, but he was looking for Adam. He was chasing after Adam. Why? Did you ever ask yourself why? How many of you know your life? How many of you know what your life's all about? You know the secrets of your life that others don't know. You know where you've made it, where you've ma messed up, where you've made mistakes. And I don't know about you, but I ask this question just like David over and over again. Psalms chapter 8 verse 4, where David says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? How many have ever felt that way? Or the son of man that thou would visit him? I, I think about that all the time. I think about my life and the complexity of my life at times and, and, and what I've been through personally and the eyes, the lows, the successes and the failures and the mistakes and all of that stuff. And I sit in my room sometimes and I tell God, you got the wrong, you got the wrong man. How many have ever felt that way? Maybe I'm the only one. Good. Thank God there's hands going up. I feel better. And you think to yourself, why are you wanting me to do this? Why did you ask me to continue to do this? I would never pick me. And you would probably feel that you would never pick you. And you think to yourself, why do you keep coming after me? Why do you keep chasing after me? Why do you still want to visit us? I, I think about even the Church of Canada as a whole. Why would God ever want to visit the Church of Canada as a whole? Because of two reasons. Number one is He loves us. Number, two, number, number one, He loves us. He wants to be with us. God wants to be with us regardless of who we are because He simply loves us. Isn't that wonderful to give Him praise on? Hallelujah. Number two is it, it's, it's incredible to think. It is really incredible to think that God needs us. It's incredible to think that. But that's what he's saying right now in Ezekiel. He's saying, he's saying, I sought for a man that I might find one, that I might put a hedge around the nation, hallelujah, and that I might protect it from destruction. Why couldn't God just do that all by himself? Well, he can't because he gave dominion over the earth to man. And he follows his own laws and he follows his own, his own decisions. He gave dominion over the earth to man. And he needs man to do work on the earth on his behalf. Are you with me? This is why he sought after Adam. He didn't give up on Adam. And God will never give up on you. Hallelujah. And God loves you. He wants to spend time with you. But he needs a people right now to do something on his behalf. There's a nation in Perel right now. There's a nation in trouble. It's called the nation of Canada. It is in deep, deep trouble right now. 
It needs something to happen for the nation to protect it from, from going down the slippery slope of destruction. Because there are crafty and cunning people being led by the spirit of darkness trying to, to, to collapse this nation into wickedness and into control and manipulation. God needs a, a man, God needs a woman, and God needs a people right now in order to put a hedge of protection around the nation. We are not here just to gather on Sunday morning just to worship until He comes. We have a responsibility as the church of the living God to do what God has sought after us to do. Can you give the Lord a big praise? I want you to know you are essential right now. You are a very, very, very significant person in, in, before us right now. And so God is constantly chasing after a man, a woman. We see that through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation because God gave dominion over the earth to man. God now works through man to, it, to bring about his will in the land. Hallelujah. But why? Why is he looking for a man? Well, we know because of a hedge of protection, but really why is God looking? And what does he really want me to do and accomplish? Well, I think that's found in Psalm 68. If you have your Bible, go there. I want to encourage your faith today. Praise God. And God, why did God call this church and this gathering of saints into existence? And why did God launch this ministry four years ago? Against all odds. Hallelujah. Why? Because God has a specific work. Because God sought after us. Because God wanted us. Because God had a purpose for us. And God knew there would be a people that have a vigilance inside of them. And a backbone and a strength to stand up against adversity and deception. God knew there would be a people that would be willing in the city of Hamilton to gather and to stand up, especially at this moment of time. Amen. And I must say, that's you and I. Somebody say, praise God. That doesn't mean there's nobody else. There is, but I'm speaking specifically to our house right now. Why is he looking for a man or a woman? Psalm 68 verse 11 says it very clearly. The Lord gave the word. God is looking to give the word to somebody. That's what God's looking to do. There's nothing more valuable right now to you than a given word from the Spirit of God. Nothing more valuable than a word from heaven. Nothing more valuable that God could deposit into you is the word. Why? Because the word of God changes everything. And a word from God can, can fix everything just like that. He sent his word and he healed us and he delivered us from all of our destructions. So it's a word. Why is God seeking out? Because he wants to deposit his word into a man. He wants to deposit his word into a woman and he wants to deposit his word into a group of people. What do you, what do you think he was doing with Adam walking in the cool of the day? Eating figs? No, he was speaking with Adam. He was ministering to Adam. He was teaching Adam. He was instructing Adam. He was giving Adam his word into his spirit. Hallelujah. That's what he does with every man and woman of God when they get alone with him. He is depositing a word in them. Why? Because he has a work for them to do in the earth. They are essential for a hedge of protection around their family, around their friends, around their neighbors, in their communities, and to the nation. I know our government doesn't think it needs the church, but if it didn't have the church, this nation is doomed. It is. And I'm getting sick and tired of our government not standing up and protecting the churches that are being burnt to the ground. Do you know why? Because they see no value in the church. And actually the devil has lied to them to make them feel that the church really is the problem, not the solution. But without the church and without a man of God or a woman of God in the land, according to the scripture, by the word of God through Ezekiel, if there is no man, if there is no woman, 
if there is no people, there is no protection. And how does this all transpire? It transpires because God gives a word. God gives a word. And why does he give the word? Well, the Bible goes on and tells us in verse in, in that same scripture. It says, the Lord gave the word and great was the company of those that published it. Published it is to make it public. We publish a book. Why? Because it was thoughts that were in our mind. It was thoughts that are in our heart that we now convey on paper that we then make it public for others to read what those thoughts and those ideas are. God is saying, I need a people right now and I'm looking for a people right now who are willing to receive what I'm saying and publish it. Make it public amongst the nations. Somebody say, praise God. That's what God called you to be. God called you to be a publisher. He's looking for somebody who can take that word and release it in the earth and make it known. Hallelujah. Because that word, listen, that word is the hedge of protection. That word is the hedge of protection. How many, how many remember when we pray all the time, Lord, put a hedge of protection around the church. Remember those type of prayers? Lord, some of us have been saved a little bit longer than others, I guess. But we used to say, Lord, put a hedge of protection around the church. And some people don't even know what that hedge of protection is. That hedge of protection is a word from heaven in a man or a woman that has now been made publicly known amongst others. I'm praying that our prime minister gets saved and starts looking for a word from man and women of God again. Or if he doesn't want to get saved, then give us a man or a woman in leadership that seek out the voice of the prophet again and seek out the voice of the minister because it is the word that is published in a nation that protects it. Let's bring that into your own personal life for a second. It is a word in your life that is published that'll bring protection to you. Amen. The word of God that's published. That's why you hear me all the time say, speak, 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 speak. I've been saying it now for 25 years. You got to speak. You got to sing. You got to open up your mouth. It cannot remain inside of you. The word in order for it to do something has to be published. It has to be made public. It has to be released through vocal cords and through a tongue or written down on paper. But it has to be made known. I like this. You want to know who's great in the kingdom? It's not the people that have the nice clothes or drive the best cars or have the fanciest jewelry. It's not those type of people. It's not the guy that has his face up on a billboard. Or, he, or he's got himself looking good, just right, so could, to make you feel like he's some great preacher or, or she's some great minister. It's not those type of people. That's not what the Bible calls great. Now, the church has its celebrities and think they are great. But that's not what the Bible defines greatness as. It's not how big a pastor's church is or how small a pastor's church is. It's not how big and beautiful the building is or how small the building is. It makes no difference what the man or woman of God look like. God does not define greatness by these things. Preachers do. Trust me, I've hung out with all of them. Preachers do. Image is important to them. But to God, that means nothing. Here's how God defines a people. He says, "Great, the Lord giveth the word. And great is the company that release and publish the word that God has given. They are great people. Speak to me now. Amen. They are great people that publish the word. A powerful church in the community is the church that is declaring God's word that they have received from him. Those are the people that heaven defines as a great group of people. Amen. And what we ought to be praying for in our pulpits once again, is not the guy who has the tight jeans or the baggy pants. 
or, 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 or a certain style or has a certain lighting on him or on her. We ought not to be praying for that. We need to be praying for our men and women of God that stand in the pulpits of our nation that they can hear the word of God again. Come on, they, the intercessors ought to be praying. Help them hear the word from heaven. And God give them the boldness, the confidence, the strength to publish that word without the fear or without the favor of man. We need it again. Because God calls that type of person great. And God calls that type of people great. I want this church not to be recognized by the religious or by the politicians or any, any man as being great. But I sure want to hear from heaven as God spoke to the Philadelphia church in the book of Revelation. How he spoke to them that they were great because they were faithful. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. I want heaven's commendation on this house. I want heaven's recognition upon our house. And the Bible is very clear how we get it. This church must be a church that publishes the word of God from our hearts. The Lord has a word to release. The, word, the Lord in every generation, at every moment, every time, has a word to release. But he needs people to release it. He needs people to release it. If God would re didn't need people to release it, then he would simply speak in an audible voice to the people of the earth. Come on now. If God didn't need people to do it, then he would grab a donkey and have it done. And he had to do that one time. If God needed, God, God can do, how many believe God can do anything? Now, if I was God, I would have, you know, we would have this thing really dramatized. I mean, I, I would have the earth and I would be like, hello down there. I mean, but that's not how he created this. He created by speaking through people. He speaks through people. Yes, he does. I think God could win the nation of Canada quicker with a donkey than Peter Marshall. <laughs> I would say something else, but it might offend somebody. I do. I think God could save the nation of Canada quicker than with Peter Marshall. With a donkey. How do you know? Well, let me, ask, let me show you this. God rents Cops Coliseum. Or for, what is it? Whatever that stadium is, downtown Hamilton. God says, come and hear the talking donkey. The place would be filled. Isn't that true? If God said, hey, come and hear Peter Marshall, we may have a few hundred. God says, get the talking donkey, we'd have it packed, lined up. People buy tickets for that. And then God be on the platform going, believe in my only begotten son through the donkey. How many know that would shake the city? But that's not how God chose it to be. Because if that was what God would do, he would do it. Listen to me. God chose a man. God looks for a man or a woman to publish that word. That's the word, way he has chosen to be because we are made in the image of God and because why? We carry the spirit of God in us and God uses us to deliver his powerful word. Now, the question is not, now, now we know who God's looking for. Now we know what God is trying, why he's looking for that person. What is the word that the Lord wants to release? That's very important right now because I, I'm going to be bold enough to say uh, say a lot of what's preached from our pulpits now is not the word of the Lord any longer it's inspiring it, it it's inspiring it lifts us up it encourages us and all of that stuff but is it really the word of the Lord have we have we stopped for a moment in the church and analyzed and judged the word that has been preached from our pulpits, from our people, in our communities, from our own lives. That's very important idea. What is the word that God is trying to publish in the earth? 
Well, I'll tell you one thing, and I'm sticking on this topic all year, as you know. It must be first. It must be faith. It's got to be faith. If it's not faith, it's not from heaven. Because God doesn't preach doubt through a man. So if you wonder if something is from God that is being spoken of by, by ministers or by an individual, if there's doubt in it, then it didn't come from God. Help me now. If there's doubt in it, it didn't come from God. If there's condemnation in it, it didn't come from God. If there's conviction in it, it came from God. Because conviction is a good thing. Somebody, condemnation, bad thing. Conviction, good thing. But let me tell you, when we hear doubt coming from the pulpit, I'm here to tell you right now, that minister did not hear from God. Now you say, why would you say that? Because my responsibility as a minister is to protect the body of Christ from words that are not from heaven themselves or from the scripture. And I'm going to prove this in scripture right now. It's got to be faith. It's got to be faith. Say that with me. It's got to be faith. It's got to be faith. That's how God speaks. The Bible says this in, in, uh, in, in Romans chapter 10. Let's go there. So many of you know this, but let's go there real quick. It's got to be faith. What, what is this church going to proclaim? It's going to proclaim things by what? By faith faith. Romans chapter 8 says this. It says praise God. God is good. Or 10, sorry. Romans chapter 10. I need my glasses. I need a miracle somebody. Amen. <laughs> Romans chapter 8. 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh in thee. Where did that word come from? It came from God. The word is nigh in thee. In thy mouth and in thy heart. That is what? The word Say this with me. The word of faith, what which we preach. The word of faith, what which we preach. What is the word that God wants published in the earth? The word of faith. What have we been hearing from a lot of our, our ministries in Canada? Doubt, unbelief, and fear. That should tell us right now we're not, we're not, we're, we're not in the right place. The word of faith should come out of our mouths. We ought to be the type of people that say, you know what? This is what's happening in the land. But let me give you something that triumphs over all of that. Praise God. I know you're going through something, but I have a resolution and a solution to what you're going through. Here is the word of the Lord. Speak to me now. Are you still with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What this nation needs right now is a people that are publishing the word of faith. Amen. Absolutely. The word of faith ought to be coming off of our lips. Hallelujah. That's what Paul said. He said, the word is nigh unto you, even in your heart. What that, what word? The word of faith, which we preached unto you. Praise God. I would never go to a church where their preaching was doubt. Never. I would never sit my, submit myself to a ministry online that didn't preach faith into me. Come on. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Why? Because without faith, I can't overcome this world. And so right off the bat, that word that comes from the man or woman of God or from a ministry must be a published word of faith. When you come to church, my prayer is that you might come in feeling defeated. But when you go out of here, you feel like you can run through a troop and leap over a wall. And there's nothing that you can't conquer by the power of God that lives inside of you. And by the authority of God's word that has been there for you. Somebody give the Lord a big praise. The people that are considered great in the land are the people that publish the word of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are we seeing the churches that are churches growing and multiplying 
that, that, why? Because they have, through COVID-19, they have been revealing what's happening, but they've also been preaching the word of faith on how we will stand strong against it and beat and defeat it, hallelujah, and live over it in Jesus' name. I'm here to tell you right now, there's another wave of deception coming, but you are ready for it. Why? Because God has allowed us to be able to publish that word to prepare you to conquer it by faith. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a big praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it must be faith. Hebrews chapter 13. Look at your neighbor and say, you've got to preach faith. Tell them. Tell somebody, you've got to preach by faith. You've got to preach faith. You have to. Somebody say, praise the Lord. You've got to preach faith. You've got to. Look at your neighbor and say, everything's going to be all right. He would say, it's easy for you to say, yeah, it is, because it came from heaven. Everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. The word of faith. Remember, here's what the Bible says. Remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of what? Now, listen, if you're looking for a church, I pray you look no further than here. If you're watching online around the world, find yourself a preacher that will deliver the word of God to you. Not the one who has the nice clothes or the nice haircut <laughs> or, or what they're driving or all of that stuff. Because that stuff is a front It's great, but I want to find out what they know about the Bible. Well, I thought I'd get a little more amens on it. I want to know what the prevailing word that they're delivering. And the Bible says this, Remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. Now, can I just share something with you? Out of my heart. My most important responsibility to you is not to give you cupcakes and ice cream, although we will give you lots of that around here. My, my most important thing is, is to deliver to you the word of God every week. Somebody say praise God. Now, you know me, I love spending time with you. But the most important thing that we can allow a preacher to do is spend time with God. Amen. Help me now. I got to get done. Yes, yes. It's more valuable, once again, for the preacher, the pastors, the ministry ministers to get back to hearing from God again. Amen. Not that they can clean your car and cut your lawn, but that they can hear the word of God. Because what is God looking for? A man or a woman who can deliver a word that he wants to release in the earth. Hallelujah. And what is that word got to be? Here it goes on. Whose faith follow. Listen, there it is. Remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow the word that they have spoken unto you. Now, I, I, I tell you what, a lot of believers, we, we're really good at speaking the word, but when, when, when the nuts and bolts hit, hit, whether or not we can live that word that we have spoken out of our mouth, the two test of the, re, the, the faith that's on that word is the actions by which we carry out of what we have just spoken. Come on, let me bring you to a little level of maturity here. Hallelujah. Number one is don't be all upset because the pastor didn't shake your hand today or the pastor didn't come to your house to have faith. You ought to be saying, what did that man or woman of God deliver from that pulpit today that would revolutionize my life? Hallelujah. Somebody say praise God. And let me watch that preacher. And let me watch that saint of God. Because a whole lot of people talk a good game. Let me tell you something. I saw a whole lot of people talking a good game of COVID-19. But when people, when things started to get tense, we saw people retreat. 
Hear me now. We have to be people who publish the word. This church has been called to publish the word. But this church has been called to publish the word of faith. Can you lift your hands to heaven and bless them for a second? Come on. And could you pray for me and I pray for you, dear, my precious family. That God would help all of us in this sanctuary today by the power of the Holy Spirit. To be able to hear, understand, and publish the word of faith in this hour, in our land, and in our lives. Help us, Holy Spirit, we pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, though whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Considering the end of their conversation. Don't just listen to them. Watch them. Watch faith exude from them and follow them right through what they just published. <laughs> to the end of that conversation. Somebody say praise God. I, I just ask that you would pray for me that I would not buckle in this hour. I really do. I, I covet the prayers of the saints that God would continue to give us that strength and that, that operation of the Spirit to live within us so that we would remain strong to the end. And I pray that for you also. Praise God. But you say, the Lord, what is the word the Lord delivers in the earth? It's all over the Bible. It will be in the word of faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, what, now the Lord brought me back this, and I was praying the other day, and he said, this church is getting ready to blitz this once again in the land. What is, what is one of the greatest faith-filled words that the church could ever deliver? And I was asking God that. I said, Lord, remind me, and I, should, and I knew it, but I wanted to hear it from God again. Remind me what the great word of faith is. And the Lord began to speak to me. Actually, he spoke to me in a song. And some of you may know the song. I, I'm going to try, but it, it, that song, How lovely are the mountains are. Do you remember that song? Do you know that one? Do you know that one? Do you know that song, Shola? The feet of him who brings good news. Good news announcing peace. Remember that song? Come on, you should know that. God reigns. I can't sing, see? Our God. There you go. Do you know that song, Curtis? Do you know that song, Daniel? No? There you go. How many know that song? You got, you got the key of Zed? Somebody asked me one day, what, what key do you sing on? I said, it's somewhere way over there. Like, that's the song. Who brings good? Can you play that softly? Praise God. How many know that song? If you grew up in church, you would know that. Feet of them who brings good news. Do you know, can you say, help me sing it? Thanks, Pastor Emmer. Yes. Announcing peace, proclaiming words of happiness. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Oh, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Praise God. We used to sing that in church all the time. And do you know where that came from? That came from your Bible. That comes from the Word of God in, in Psalms, in the book of Psalms. Praise God. The, the or, sorry, book of Isaiah, sorry. Isaiah 52, verse 7. How lovely are the mountains, are the feet of him who brings good news. What is God looking for? A man, a woman, a great a group of people. What is he looking to do? Give them his word. What does he want them to do with that word? He wants them to make it public, publish it, speak it, preach it, teach it, whatever. Hallelujah. What will it be in the context of? 
the word of faith. What is a great word of faith that the church has abandoned in the land? It's the good news. Somebody say praise God. How lovely are the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace and brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation and says to Zion that your God reigns. Can somebody give the Lord a big praise? Proclaiming words of happiness, oh, our God reigns. Yes, our God reigns. Oh, our God reigns. Yes, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Sing it from the top. How lovely are the mount who brings good news. Good news. And now peace proclaiming words of happiness. Our God reigns. Come on, sing it. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Oh, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Sing it again. Our God. Oh, our God reigns. Our God reigns, our God reigns. Then we would sing, oh, he's alive. Yes. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, our God reigns. Yes, he does. be seated just for a moment. God bless you. Isn't that wonderful? Who are these people that God is looking for? These are the people that God's looking for. The people who are lovely and their feet are beautiful because they bring good news. Hallelujah. What is Kingdom Worship Center all about? A people that brings good news. Hallelujah. Good news. Say to your neighbor, say good news. There's no greater news than the gospel. Hallelujah. There is no greater news than the gospel. For the gospel is good news. Hallelujah. Jesus said to us, and I close with this scripture. Praise God. Pastor Ralph's going to come up and share a word with, with you all today. Matthew 28. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power has been given unto our Savior in heaven and in earth. That's good news, isn't it? Praise God. No matter what man throws at me today, my God reigns. Come on, my God reigns. I know what man is saying, but our God reigns. Rain. Say that with me. Our God reigns. COVID-19. Our God reigns. D variant. Our God reigns. Lockdown shutdowns. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. Difficulties, trials, troubles, tribulations, obstacles. Unexpected things. My God reigns. Woo!
Let me close. Let me close. All power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to deserve, observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. I am with you. Look to your neighbor and say, he's with you. Come on, make that public. Come, let me, help me preach now. You're a, you've got to publish it. Hallelujah. Say that. With you. He's with you. He reigns. And he's with you. Praise God. Say that with say it over your life. He is with me. You can see what God was looking for all along. Somebody to publish the word of faith. And that is good news. And the Bible, we close with this. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. And we are very close to the end of the world. Family. Let's be publicists and let's publish the word of God. Let's publish it over the lives of everyone we come in contact with. Let's give them good news and the word of faith. And let's speak the word of faith over our own personal lives and our families this hour. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Hallelujah. Let the sick say I am healed. Let every saint of God say, if God be for me, who can be against me? My God reigns. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. And proclaim that in the land in the name of Jesus. God bless you as Pastor Ralph comes at this time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give the Lord a big praise, everybody. Praise God. Amen. Well, you got to preaching this morning, Pastor. Don't you love the Word? That's what's going to make a difference. Trying to observe what's happening across Canada. There have been those trying to make it work. They've been trying to make it sound like God. But today, we didn't have to work up anything. There was a sweet, sweet flow precious work of the Holy Spirit. Oh, don't we love this? I hear the roar of a lion. I hear the roar of a lion. There is a roar of lion coming from the heart of pastor. God's looking for a people who will let a roar come forth. I was listening to one of the prophets of God, and I said, Lord, they seem to have so many nice prophets down in the USA. Oh, their population's great. Raise up the prophets in Canada. And I was listening to a man, his name is Dutch Sheets. And uh, he was talking about the roar of a lion. And I, was, I sat there, and all of a sudden, I roared. My wife came flying into my study, wondered what happened. I went, oh! God wants a lot of roars to come out. The devil's afraid of the real roar. The church has been silent too long. We do need to hear a word of faith. That will quicken life within the heart of every believer. And there will be a holy roar that will come out of the people of God. We've been silent too long. The devil's tried to seal our lips with fear. But there is something burning like fire down deep in your soul. And there's nothing's going to stop the roar. The enemy says, I've got your children but there's a roar that's coming that's going to deliver them. The enemy says, I'm going to take you down in sickness. But there's a roar coming out. We're not tolerating what's going on in our nation any longer. Not shall there be only prophets, 
that will be in other countries. God is raising prophets in our land and stirring up old ones, bring, releasing new ones. Hallelujah. Some may have white hair. Some may look like they shouldn't be up there, but praise God you should hear what they say when they begin to prophesy. God's got a prophet down here. He has been bold to share the last, over the last number of months. We're not ashamed of the gospel. It still is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. But some of you need to get the roar going again. Let there be a holy roar that will come from your soul. I'd like to conclude this service, Pastor, with people doing a holy roar. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Glory. And yes, and don't forget to give your holy gift to the Lord on your way out too. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank God for this place. I said, I thank God for this place. I thank God for this man who's not ashamed to share the word of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I feel a holy roar burst into my soul. I'm going to roar. Who else in the house will roar with me? Come on, stand to your feet. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. I was singing an old song. Thank God for the old songs. Victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conquerors tread. We're beginning to hear the movement of the conquerors. We're beginning to hear the roar of the lion. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. We got the right key there. Victory ahead. Oh, much higher. Keep me way up. Vict victory ahead. A little higher yet. We're getting it. Victory ahead. Victory ahead through the blood of Jesus. Victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conquerors tread. By faith I see the victory ahead. How many know that old song? Oh, half a dozen. Try it up a little higher. A couple more knows higher yet. Hallelujah. I hear the conquerors tread. How many know you can hear the movement? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting a mighty army released. I shared first tonight about the army of God and what God is raising up in this hour. Hallelujah. I victory. I see it. You've got to see it. You see it when you prophesy it. We heard the word. We see it in the spirit. Victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus. Victory ahead. Come on, sing it with me. Victory ahead, victory ahead, through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conquerors tread, by faith I see the victory ahead. Oh, victory ahead, victory ahead, through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conquerors tread. By faith I see the victory ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready to do a little roar? You say, well, I don't say much. That's time for you to say something. If something gets a hold of you, my daughter called and there's a little mouse that got out of a box. She roared. Oh, I thought it was a huge rat. It was a little wee mouse. But she roared. Some of us need to roar. We need to get it out. Said so it's not going to be. Devil, you're not going to have what you think you have. You're not going to tear down, hold me down. I'm going to be free to glorify God. I feel a shout in the house. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout. Hallelujah. Give a roar. Let me let me hear a roar. Roar, let the lions roar. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, rabababababakashandai. Glory to God. Pastoral staff, run up here for a moment. 
Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. You, come right, come right. Here's a here's a one that knows how to roar. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Another line back here. Glory to God. Come on. We're going to leave this place roaring. We're going to let the devil know that in Canada, in Hamilton, Ontario, there's a place that's filled with lions. And we're not taking it anymore. We're rising up, taking our nation back. The word of the Lord's going forth across the land. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Those who have a heavenly language, roar in heavenly language. Let there be a work. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Let the holy roar, Lord. Let the holy roar, Lord. Glory to God. Let heaven shake. Let heaven shake by the roar of God's people. Yakakakaroa. Mahando, Ria Hatalaba, Shanda, Ponte, Rada Sala de Mavaria. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say with me, we're taking our nation back. God's raising up a godly nation, a holy people that will proclaim His word. And great is the company who publish it. Hallelujah. Is God good? Hallelujah. You better take it. I won't stop. <laughs> I just better, better take the mic back. Glory to I feel fire. Ever since two days ago, I roared. Something released in me. You need to roar. You say you're not sitting back anymore. The devil's trying to affect my son, Pastor David. I got roaring. I said, no, back off, you devil. It's time to roar. It's time to get our children back. Some of you have sons and daughters that are not serving God. Roar. Get them back. Let's see God work. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Ha, <laughs> ha. Praise God, praise God. <laughs> shout, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. He is God. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I know it's time to go, but I think I'll fly home today. Praise God. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Glory. Oh, Rababa Shandaraba. There's a breakthrough. I see a breakthrough. We're crashing through barriers that have been set up. Glory to God. Get people out to this house. There's deliverance in the house. There's freedom in the house. There's victory in the house. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big praise, somebody. I, you say, this is different for me. This, this will bring, hey, faith changes everything. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I love when pastor said, this nation shall be holy, shall be saved. I saw the Canadian flag, and we declare in the name of Jesus Revival is sweeping across the nation of Canada. Come on, let's publish that word. Hallelujah. Revival is sweeping from Vancouver to St. John's, from the Arctic Circle to the U.S. border. Canada shall be saved. Hallelujah. Praise God. And revival is breaking loose in your family. Come on, say that. Revival is breaking loose in my family. Say it again. Revival is breaking loose in my family. In the name of Jesus. The Lord gives the word. And great is the company that publishes it. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands one more time and bless Jesus.
as we get ready to walk out this door, we don't walk out in defeat. We don't walk out in fear. We walk out in faith. We walk out with the confession and the word of faith. And we will see the supernatural miracle working God throughout the whole week in our lives. Hallelujah. And all around us in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, 30 seconds. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, 30 seconds. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Now do me one more thing. Point at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are blessed and you are highly favored. Say, neighbor, you are blessed and you are highly favored. Say it again, neighbor, you are blessed and you are highly favored. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor Robert's going to bless you with a prayer. Go out celebrating after he prays. God bless you. Father, we thank you today in the name of Jesus for your power, for your presence. Canada shall be saved. I thank you, Lord, that you are starting a work in this land that will not end. You have begun it a long time ago. And this nation, Lord, is going to serve you. Father, from the east to the west, from the north to the south, Canada shall be saved. We will see revival in Ottawa. We will see revival in every governmental office in this nation. We will see revivals in our schools and in our universities. Because, Lord, your people who are called by your name are humbling themselves. And we are praying and we are believing for you, Lord God, to do a great work in this nation. Father, bless your people today as they go. Lord, we believe, Father, that you will lead them to do great and awesome things in this city. Father, people are going to be saved as they hand out these cards. Father, the anointing of the Lord is upon each and every one of them. And Lord, they will see a great harvest being brought forth in the name of Jesus. Father, the hands of the diligent lead to profit. And I pray prosperity and your blessing over your people today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.